Well, the origin of this idea um, really goes back into my student days in Oxford when I was in a library looking at uh, the original paper that was written by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen. And I was um, somewhat uh, uh, fascinated by, or I should perhaps say also surprised, by the way Einstein was uh, trying to um, phrase the concept of uh, element of reality in the paper. And uh, it turns out that this paper is, 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 a, is a sophisticated paper. And in order to um, put the message across, Einstein had to very carefully define notions such as locality, reality, uh, completeness. Defining reality was basically almost equivalent to the concept of passive eavesdropping. So if you have, not a physicist, but if you have a cryptologist reading this paper, uh, then, uh, then that 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 becomes almost obvious that what what uh, he was trying to define was uh, really learn about the value of a certain physical quantity without disturbing this quantity at all. And then, of course, knowing that later on this idea was um, analyzed and rephrased by John Bell and others, so it was uh, relatively easy to come up with a scheme. Of course, you know well now I'm telling you this is kind of sounds easy, but when you when you're there, one so never one never knows. Yeah, so it always looks. Mm, kind of straightforward post-factum, but it wasn't that clear from right. the very beginning. Yeah, it worked, yeah, it okay. worked. <laughs> but I think um, that we are probably looking uh, in, uh, at this problem fr from a slightly wrong perspective. I, I think it's probably wrong to expect uh, truly quantum computers to um, do certain cla classical tasks or well-defined classical operations in, in much better than, than the classical computers do. I think that for quantum computers there will be an entirely new class of problems that, uh, that are only mm, that only make sense for quantum computers. For example, you may just uh, produce as an input to a quantum computer two particles and simply ask a question, are they entangled or not? It's a, it's a simple decision problem. The answer is yes or no. And, uh, but the data structure is inherently quantum. So uh, classical computer cannot even take this data as an input. And uh, so this is a, an example of inherently quantum algorithm that can be designed for a quantum computer. That is important because quite often we really want to know whether something is entangled or not. And uh, <laughs> And, and that, that is that kind of a problem that probably we will have more and more um, in, in, in the future for quantum computers. And other problems would be problems related to quantum simulations. I think they f we know today that there are non-trivial quantum phenomena in biological systems. So there are, um, in the process of photosynthesis, for example, you can mm -hmm. see that uh, uh, a light harvesting antenna, which is one part of a, of a bacteria, is collecting light and then creating exciton that propagates to another part in the bacteria called chemical reaction center. Now this propagation is, is truly quantum, but uh, we know that, that it has this uh, coherence embedded into this. We know also that it has uh, several interesting features. The energy, is extremely, the energy transfer is extremely efficient. We would like to understand why is that so. But the system is rather complex to analyze in terms of equations. So uh, trying to reproduce it in terms of at least essential features of the system in terms of a quantum simulator, where you have a quantum system that you can control, for example, a set of ions, mimicking this particular energy transfer, where the experimentalists can control certain parameters and learn what makes this energy transfer so efficient, what, what is so important there? And that could be of enormous practical value for maybe for solar cell technology and, and the like. So there are many problems for computers, for quantum computers that I'm sure will be found. They may not necessarily be defined as a simple mathematical problem like factoring, you know, given such and such number, find, uh, find prime decomposition. There will be, 
there will be the whole new class of algorithms that, that even the formulation of them would require or presentation of this problem to a computer would require a quantum structure. So I'm not too much concerned about uh, the fact that there are not so many algorithms that can be described in classical terms that, and for which we can show that quantum computers are better. In fact, uh, I'm sure that the quantum computers will generate a, a separate class of problems that they're good at solving. You can analyze what's going to happen in the system. Take seven, take eight, take 42 particles. Maybe you can still write equations and, uh, and solve this uh, Schrodinger equation of a few interacting particles. But if you increase the number of particles, it's getting exponentially difficult to solve equations. At some point, uh, we may end up in a very strange situation where we have no way to make predictions what's going to happen in this experiment. So this way, you lose ability to confront your experimental data with your theoretical predictions. Uh, and that would be like the end of uh, physics as we know it, because something happens in the experiment and you don't know, maybe this actually refuted quantum theory, but that this detector fired. But, but somehow you don't know, because you cannot make predictions, you cannot even calculate the probability for this. So in some sense, you know, if we can do, um, if we can analyze uh, certain phenomena using, uh, as we do it in classical cases, or we have a classical computer simulating other system, that will at least uh, help us to understand what we should expect in a, in a, in a, in a given circumstances. I, I would say that probably over the next few years, the stress will be on development of tools and techniques that would allow us to control nature with precision such that we can think, okay, now we domesticated it, we, we can control things. What can we do with that? Well, perhaps we can do um, better quantum communication, quantum cryptography. Device independent cryptography will be probably something that we will uh, have on the horizon soon. Perhaps some simple quantum computation, perhaps quan su quantum simulation. But it doesn't have to be restricted into computing aspects of it. I think that you can probably also um, say, well, we'll have better... For example, mm, obtaining energy, simulating a process like photosynthesis. Yeah, for yeah, quantum simulations, but also like better frequency standards, better clocks, more accurate clocks that could be do good for, uh, for precision navigation some other forms of sensors and sensing. So there, there are many things. It, it is so clear that sooner or later we'll have to really explore quantum technology. It's bound to happen. There's just no other way. There's so much potential there. It's very so powerful. It is. It, it is. it is quite clear that there is something there. It's like, you know, discovering electricity. You still don't know what's going to happen, what is it going to be good for, but you know you can see that there's a potential for that. So there's this new resource of quantum entanglement, quantum superpositions, phenomena that if you harness them, they can actually probably produce something absolutely fantastic. And it's premature at this point to speculate what exactly that's going. But it's a little bit like going back to the past. Imagine that instead of you interviewing me, you go to the and interview one of the pioneers of, say, computer science, like Charles Babbage. And, uh, and then you point at this universal machine that he produced with, well, at least had some idea with clog wheels and so on and so forth, and you ask, well, can you now speculate perhaps what is this device going to be good for? What do you think people will use it for? And what would he say? He would probably never think about internet, about word process, about computer games. It's some completely beyond his imagination at the time. He would be say, well, it would be probably something like tabulating uh, some mathematical functions or that you can then do it in a purely mechanical way without errors. So you just connect some sort of print and so on and so forth. So a very mundane thing from, from our perspective today. And so by the same token, you know, me trying to <laughs> give uh, any sort of educated guess what's going to happen in the field is bound to fail. And I'm, because probably, whatever I say, probably five years from now, there will be something by far more exciting and more interesting than what I can say today. Uh, but of course, we do have to make those guesses because that, that makes field going. So I so uh, I say, well, simulators, yes. Uh, device independent cryptography, I hope so. Uh, some interesting, uh, 
uh, new frequency standards or better atomic clocks? Probably yes, some new forms of metrology. I hope so. So those are sort of buzzwords, I think, that, uh, and probably much more.